morning. Today is uh, Music Sunday. As a part of Music Sunday, um, we are going to be, um, John and his team are going to be presenting selections from Messiah Part 1 by Handel. And I, I want to read uh, a quick verse, or a verse that's a part of that. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Isaiah 45. Welcome to worship. said, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light three candles as a sign of the light of Christ. Isaiah the prophet foretold God's plan to overcome the darkness of human sin. The Lord says to his servant, It is to light a thing that you should be my servant, to rise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus our light, and our salvation. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. We now pray together in one voice. God of all hope and love, joy and peace, as night workers long for the sunrise, with expected hearts we long for the coming of Christ. In our worship today, we ask to catch a glimpse of your glory, trusting in your promise that one day we will see in full when all will be made whole and new. In his name and for his sake, we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
or streaming our service, either on our church platform or on YouTube or Facebook. We, glad, we are glad that you are here and you can uh, participate uh, with us. I'm Pastor Ken, and along with uh, Sean Farrell and our tech team and our choir, uh, we want to welcome you and we hope this service will be a blessing to you. Uh, as always, we want to strongly encourage you to read through our bulletin, whether it's uh, our paper real bulletin <laughs> that we can hold in our hands or the one that we have online that gives you uh, lots of details about what is going on and how you can be involved. And uh, if you have questions about being involved, uh, who you can contact as well as uh, links that you can click on to get more information about, or if you have to reserve for something, you can do that as well. Uh, we continue to be a church that connects and grows and serves even in the midst of this uh, pandemic. And we're glad that God has given us the resources to do that. We've got sort of a one-stop uh, resource here, uh, npctucson.org slash live, you go there and uh, you can find out all the information you need about, again, the ministries uh, that, are coming on to, uh, that are coming up in this month. Uh, today is Music Sunday. Uh, our, our praise teams uh, at 8 and uh, at 11.30 and uh, our choir here at 9.45 are going to be sharing just a wonderful, diverse uh, mix of music, uh, holiday music today, and we look forward to that. In terms of connecting, uh, we want you to fill out those online welcome cards or the cards that you have with you here in the sanctuary. Uh, we are having two in-person Christmas Eve services at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, you need to register for those. Uh, it is uh, master required, limited seating, and again, you must reserve those. Uh, but we're doing something uh, to try to enhance our worship experience. And this Saturday, we are going to be, it's going to be a drive through We're going to be handing out 500 Christmas Eve kits. It's going to be uh, in the parking lot, our parking lot over here on the corner of Fort Lowell and Tucson Boulevard. You can just drive by and they're Christmas kit bags. They're going to be uh, filled with lots of fun stuff. Uh, that uh, for families, for anyone, uh, to enhance our uh, Christmas Eve services. Of course, both those services will be streamed live as well as be on demand um, afterwards. So uh, we encourage you to take part in that. And again, um, you can go on to our website and find out information about that. Uh, Okay, in terms of growing, we, uh, you can refer again to your bulletin. We still have classes and groups going on uh, if you'd like to get involved. Uh, serving, our Advent Gift of the Heart continues uh, each Sunday in December. Uh, we had a goal of $10,000 and we're about $3,000 short. So if you haven't given yet, um, we, uh, we appreciate it. And thank you so much if you have. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, we are praising God that we're only uh, that short and we still have uh, a couple weeks to go at least. Our Angel Tree Project, our Deacon Angel Tree Project for the Gospel Res Rescue Mission continues, but those gifts need to be in by tomorrow. And our book drive is also getting close to coming to a close, so please take note of that. Again, you can find all this information that you need in your bulletin. And once again, thank you for your generosity. Uh, let's continue our worship as we lift up our prayers. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you and we thank you uh, so much for the opportunity to worship. 
whether it is here in person or with our families or as we're streaming. Lord, we thank you that uh, you give us the technology to do this. And Lord, uh, we thank you that even uh, though we may be apart, your Holy Spirit unites us. So Lord, we lift up our prayers to you, lift up our lives. We intercede on behalf of others, Lord. We think of those in our life who need healing and comfort. We think of those, Lord, who are waiting for results of tests or, Lord, who are trying to figure out how to do surgeries, minor or major, during this pandemic. Lord, we pray for those that we know who have contracted COVID. And Lord, whether their symptoms are light or whether it has ended them, they, they, they find themselves in the hospital, Lord, we lift them up to you. We pray for our essential workers, those that are keeping businesses, essential businesses open, those who are working tirelessly in our hospitals and our care facilities, our doctors, our nurses, our healthcare workers. Lord, we hear of this vaccine, and Lord, we are thankful that it can start to be used by people in emergency services. And Lord, we pray that um, that will be used in, in right and good ways. Lord, we thank you that um, you are the ultimate healer, and that you come to us and heal us spiritually, but also heal us physically. And so we pray for physical healing for those that are suffering. Lord, we pray for friends and family who we may not be able to see this Advent season. We pray, Lord, that, uh, that the love and the care is still there and that they feel that across the miles. Lord, we lift up those who do not know you as the light. And we pray, Lord, that we will be a light that bears witness to you and that you will shine your light into their lives. We continue to pray for our church. Lord, I thank you for the generosity of this church as, as Advent brings um, a, a lot of requests. Lord, we pray for those who have lost jobs. We pray for those who may be on the brink of eviction. Lord, we pray that somehow our government leaders will do the right thing and be wise and make the decisions that can help people who are in trouble, businesses that are in trouble. Lord, we thank you for the witness of Northminster and other churches in the city around the world, and we pray that your church will continue to shine the light of Jesus in the midst of darkness. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for this Music Sunday. We pray that this music as it is offered up to you, Lord, in praise and worship. May we also offer up our hearts and our lives in the same way. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, for uh, our children's uh, message, your children's time, and uh, we've been using our um, Advent uh, calendar here. We used this last year. We changed the dates. And, um, uh, but uh, if you remember last, or a couple weeks ago already, on, on November 29th, I think Pastor Pete had those glasses that he had behind here. And then um, last week, um, Pastor Andy had this reflector. He still got it. You remember that? He put it on. Sean, would you like to put this on? No, Sean is not going to put it on. Um, and uh, today, our theme is porch lights, and I, I couldn't quite figure out how you get a porch light in here, uh, but I did, I did get something that I hope will work. Here we go. Yeah, it's a lantern. Hope you see this, kids. And just, whoo-hoo! There we go. Yeah. And, you know, uh, boys and girls, uh, we probably don't have these on our front porch. But if you think about it back in Jesus' day, 
And even probably in some parts of the world where maybe they don't have electricity, yeah, there are parts of the world that don't have electricity, like lots of them, or even access to batteries, they might have a lantern like this that hangs in their front porch or the front of their business, and it tells people that they're open, that their business is open, that our home is open, uh, and welcoming people. And that's what we do when we put on our porch lights, right? It is, it's a welcoming sign to people that we are home. And I was thinking about uh, how that relates to Jesus, boys and girls, and Jesus is sort of a porch light. He's God's light that says we're welcome, that God is inviting us to believe in him and live for him. And so, boys and girls, I want you to think about how you can be that porch light for people in your lives. Maybe it's friends in your lives that you can be kind to or you can invite them to maybe one of our Christmas Eve services. Or maybe you can make sure that you pick up one of those Christmas Eve kits and get that to them so that they can participate. Um, And it's a reminder for all of us that we are porch lights as well. Let's pray about that. Lord, we come before you and we thank you. We thank you that you have shined your light and that you have welcomed and invited us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, We're continuing our Advent series. Uh, If you've been following along with us, it's called uh, Lighting Up the Dark. I think we've got a slide there for you. Uh, And we've been using the first chapter of the the gospel written by John. Uh, And John, he loves to compare or contrast these realities of light and darkness uh, to explain the way that God's presence is in the world. And he uses it not only in, uh, in, this, in his gospel, but if you um, go further into the New Testament, he, he continues to use it in the three letters that he writes as well. Uh, you remember the first Sunday of Advent, as I mentioned, Pete left us with that wonderful truth, the greater the darkness, the greater or brighter the light of Jesus will shine. And then last week, Pastor Andy used that concept of the reflector, just like the moon reflects the light of the sun. John the Baptist, who we're introduced to in the first chapter of John, reflected the light of God. And now we are to reflect the light of Jesus. Today, our gospel writer reveals to us what happens when that light, whom he's been referring to, actually arrives. But before I get to the passage, it kind of dawned on me that this past week, that even though there has been a few chuckles and some mild laughter concerning Pete's crazy glasses, right, and Andy's reflector mechanism, there really has been an absence of what I would call profound funny. I mean, real, real funny. Thankfully, thankfully for all of you, I'm here. That's right. And I'm going to bring the funny. In fact, in these next few moments of deep joy and incredible humor and breathtaking jokes, think of them as my Christmas gift to all of you. And we're going to project these. Um, I'm glad that you're all sitting down <laughs> because these are incredible. Here's the first one. Uh, I think we've got, why do ornaments become addicted to Christmas? (laughs) Answer, they've been hooked on trees from a very young age. (laughs) Oh, come on. Oh, they only get better. Here's the next one. How much did Santa pay for his sleigh? Answer, nothing. It was on the house. (laughs) See? See, that's a good one. Come on. Come on. I hope you're taking notes. Here's one for all of you who love your Apple products. How many of you have Apple products? Okay, here's one. This is a good one. What do you get when you mix a Christmas tree with an iPad? Huh. Answer, 
A pineapple. Pine. For those of you that are streaming right now, several people are walking out of the sanctuary. Uh, this is a pretty uh, easy one. You might get this one before the answer even. What's every parent's favorite Christmas carol? Silent Night. Yeah, right? That was, that was, okay, good. Okay, uh, you know, obviously your stomachs are probably hurting. You're going, oh, Pastor Ken, we can't take any more. So I'll just give you one more. What do reindeer have that no other animals have? Answer, baby reindeer. Okay, good. Let's go on to our text. Please, no clapping. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, it's taken from John 1, uh, verses 10 to 13. You can follow along in your version uh, or the Bibles that you have with you or uh, in the sanctuary here as we project it. Verse 10, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Lord, be with my words now and open up our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear what you have for us today through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to briefly look at three ideas or themes here that I think John uh, references. And there's three of them. The first one is the nature of humanity. The second one is the nature of God's grace. And the third one is the nature of salvation. First, the nature of humanity. You know, in the midst of all the Hallmark channels made for Christmas movies, <laughs> in the midst of all the made-for-TV Christmas specials, in the midst of all the talk about peace on earth, goodwill to all people, and joy to the world, in the midst of all the nativity scenes, the little drummer boys, candy canes, and Christmas lights, which, by the way, I absolutely love and celebrate, John's Christmas story, in its own unique way, like Matthew and Luke do as well, they remind us of a side of the side of Christmas which we would rather skip over or even deny, because it isn't very complimentary concerning the nature of humanity towards the arrival of Jesus. Human nature is not standing on the sidelines cheering on the light coming into the world, into our world. A theological understanding of John 3, 9 to 11 reveals this. Or sorry, it should be John 1, 9 to 11. This is the crisis all humankind finds itself in. God sent his light into our world. But men and women everywhere ran from the light towards darkness. They did this because they had no interest in pleasing God, only in doing evil, what they wanted to do. You know, John's worldview, his theology as it were, of humanity, is not flattering. And it's not what any of us want to hear, especially during this season of Christmas. We are reminded that the world is not a neutral place. The world, according to John, opposes God's light breaking in. It opposes Jesus. Yet even amid this opposition, what do we find? Is it a angry, vengeful, vindictive God? No. Instead, we find our second theme that John gives us, the nature of God's grace. And we find it over and over again in the gospel written by John. We find it in this beautiful verse a little bit later on, John 3, 16. 
For God so loved the world, this same world that opposes, runs away, sets itself against God. He loves that world so much that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him will inherit eternal life. And we find the nature of God's grace here in our passage in verse 12. Not only does our legal status towards God change, our relational status changes as well. He gives us the right to become children. His children. And so let me ask you, when is the last time you took some time and thought about what it means for you to be one of God's children? To be his very own son or daughter. It's one thing, you know, for us as Christians to accept the fact that our sins are forgiven, that our eternal destiny is secure, that our sin debt has been paid in full. I call that head knowledge faith. But it is quite another for us as Christians to experience God as a loving, caring, all-giving, hold-back-nothing, hugging parent. I call this heart faith. And being a Christian means knowing and experiencing the reality of both. Third, the nature of salvation. John's theology of salvation combines two actions. And they're, we find them here in our passage. The first one is, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, plus children born out children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. John's theology of salvation, conversion, being born again, coming to faith in Christ, call it whatever you would like, is deliberate faith in response to divine transformation. To all who received and believed, that is an action of faith. It is deliberate, but it is always in response to what God has already done in us, a divine transformation, born of God. You know, our visual aid for this morning is this porch light. In Matthew, God sends his porch light to the wise men through the star, right? In Luke, we learn that God's porch light comes in the form of, uh, of angels to shepherds. When we know people are coming over for a visit in the evening, do you all remember when we used to be able to do that? <laughs> what do we usually do if we have one? We put on our porch light. Why? Because it says we're home. We've been expecting you. You're welcome here. Come on in. And so two questions. For those of us who know the light of the world, how can we be intentional about shining our porch light so others may know they too are welcome to investigate and to know this Jesus, to know what it means to become a child of God? And second, if you're listening or watching this worship service and you have sensed that God has his porch light out for you, and is waiting to welcome you as one of his children, I want to invite you to come on in, to make that happen right now. Here at Northminster, we call that the ABCs of faith. A, admit that you have been one of those who has been running away from God's light. The Bible calls that sin. B, believe in the light, the light that we see as the person of Jesus, whom God has sent to bring you from darkness into light and his love and forgiveness. And finally, C, commit to being part of a community of faith. What is a community of faith? A community of faith is simply filled, it is filled with people just like you. People who once walked in darkness, but who now have found the light and have become children 
of God. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you and we thank you that you have shone your light on us and in us. Lord, I pray if there are those who made that decision right now, that they will talk to someone and we give you praise, Lord, that you have shone your light into their lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that are here uh, in the sanctuary, there are drop-off boxes here in the front, and as you leave uh, the sanctuary, you can put your offerings in there. And then uh, for those of you uh, who are not here, there are several ways you can give, and um, we'll put those up on the screen or they're in the bulletin. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of the abundance and the blessings that you have given to us. Use both the gifts that are given and those that give them for your glory and your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen.
The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, shall be exalted, shall be exalted. Shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill made low, the crooked straight, and the rough places play. Crooked straight, the crooked straight, and the rough places plain, and the rough places plain. Every valley, every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain until mid law, the crooked straight. The crooked straight, the crooked straight, and the rough places plain, and the rough places plain, and the rough places plain. The crooked straight. And the rough place is plain.
born, unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Joshua, John, Julia, John, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your musical talents and abilities with us, for using them to praise God and to lift our spirits. Uh, Church of Jesus Christ, hear these words, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. May we, as his church, be that porch light that shines this name, the name above all names, Jesus Christ to others, so that they too can know him. Amen. Amen. 